accessible tool that summarizes animal telemetry information. So as you just heard, this webinar is being recorded so that it can be shared with other invitees after today. For those of you not familiar with FACT, we started as a grassroots collaboration of scientists in 2007 and have since grown to over 280 members across six states in the southeastern US, the Bahamas, and US Caribbean. Our partners include state and federal government agencies, universities, and for-profit and nonprofit groups. Research is conducted by individuals, often aggregated at an organizational or departmental level. In short, FACT is a collection point for a wide variety of projects over vast space and time. And as a network, we have over $4.7 million of telemetry assets, that's tags and receivers, currently in the water. Beginning in 2018, we instituted an online data sharing platform where detections and tags are matched systematically. Further, our system is compatible with neighboring networks, including the Atlantic Coast Telemetry Group in the Mid-Atlantic and the Ocean Tracking Network in Canada and across the globe. They're both are all depicted on the map. The dots on the map represent receiver locations. If an animal is detected anywhere where, those, where there are dots, the, receiver, the researcher receives these detections automatically. It is a great system. Thank you to OTN for building it. And it has generated a lot of data. The FACTS database currently has over 211 million detections, 8,000 acoustic tags on over 100 species. Our success in aggregating data in one place puts us in a unique position to take the next step, bringing the information to the public. So how are we going to do that? By using highly summarized data outputs. We take raw data, usually regarded as highly sensitive and tedious. No one wants to look at a file with 10 million detections. And we use several methods to group and summarize, then visualize that summary on a map. The summaries are not highly sensitive, but they are informative. They transform the data into something useful. The grand vision is to create a web map that represents the entire network. Ideally, summaries from all tag projects will be used to create a comprehensive interactive map of species distribution and range. So what can the tool do for you? So it can help you discover projects and personnel in your area or species of interest. Allow you to access summaries of movement data often years before we are published. We know how long it sometimes takes for uh, research to get into peer review and quickly visualize temporal and spatial overlap of multiple species. To best demonstrate the tool, I'm gonna to propose a few scenarios and demo how it could be used. All right, and we know how well live demos work, so everyone keep your fingers crossed. Here we go. So let's get to know the data. You go directly to the URL, which was on the presentation, or you can even just type in, if you forget the name of it, the FACT Network. From the landing page, under data, go to, data, to, to the DAVID. The tool is embedded in the FACT website, which is hosted by our regional IOS association, Sakura. The page opens with a map on top. Directly below is a series of frequently asked questions. Because this is geared for the public, it starts with general questions, like what is acoustic telemetry, and then they become more complex, like how is distribution calculated. An important note here is that the DAVID is updated at least three times per year, so we have new information coming in. And finally, we have this, our funders and supporters of the creation of this tool. Getting, map, getting back to the map, the user, which is you, selects what they want to see on the map. We can start down here with our base maps. We can change to a black and white. I think today we'll use a more natural background. Next, select the information you want displayed. Select a species. In this case, we have black tips. The information is aggregated by species, so multiple projects may contribute to the calculation of range and distribution. If you have a specific project you are interested in, you can select it here. Now select year and select month. I'm going to use all time, all months, and all years so we get the best uh, overview look of black tip sharks. Two metrics are available to be displayed, distribution and range, and I can toggle between the two. If you hover over this little question mark, it gives you a brief description of each. Next, you can choose what color scheme that you would like to use, invert the colors, and then you can change how clear or how solid it is. 
Underneath, we have citations for the information and the data that are being displayed. On the bottom right, you'll see a scale for the number of animals used to create the distribution. If it's a good, if this is a good check. If it says five animals, that hints at the accuracy of the information. If range is selected, this will just say present. Scrolling over the distribution visual, coordinates are displayed to the tenth as well as the number of animals associated with the level that you're hovering over. You can add layers to the map that show different species, time frames, etc. Delete layers, move layers up or down. For instance, I'm going to add another layer, and this time I want to overlay range. Change my color a little bit. So now I've overlaid range with distribution for black tip sharks. And finally, there's a feedback button down at the bottom. This will open up an email to data at the factnetwork.org. Tell us how much you love it, what else you would like to see, and send questions. Let's pause for a moment and talk about how this tool is informative while protecting the scientists, animals, and equipment. In these summaries, no individual animal or piece of equipment may be located because of how we calculate the metrics. Locations are rounded to the tenth, then an average daily location per animal was calculated. That is about an 11 kilometer buffer. At times when the range is extremely small, a jitter is applied. The research interests of the team that contributed to this tool include protected species, aggregation spawning sites, small MPAs, managed and unmanaged fisheries. In short, we tried to cover all of our bases of potential issues. Finally, directly under the map, we state that these visual visualizations are for informational purposes only. However, we have made it very easy to contact the researchers actually collecting the data. So that's the basic walkthrough. Let's get to some real world, well, I made them up, scenarios that I think might apply to you. So scenario one, a stock assessment is coming up and you would like to know what movement information is available on your species of interest and who is conducting that research. Maybe you wanna invite those researchers to attend a meeting or find out more about their project. A literature search is one source of information, but the DAVID allows you to query unpublished information being collected in the recent past or currently. In this scenario, we are interested in Jack Krabal. So I'm going to select my species. Here we are. And I'm gonna keep all time. There's only one project associated with this right now. And if I scroll down under citations and I click this little looking glass, a page pops up. That gives a citation for the project and also gives you the contact information. If you click on one of the email addresses, an email window pops up and you'll be able to contact them directly. The other thing you can do is click on project page and it'll take you to their project page on the FACT website, and you can read a short abstract about their project. And again, we have contact information. Here in this scenario, we're guiding you to the researchers. So you can imagine you're getting information from the DABIT, but how much more in-depth information you can get from the researchers, and we're, we are putting you in close and quick contact with them. The ease of finding and identifying researchers is also useful for collaboration. Starting a new project and want to network with other scientists with similar interests, very easy. Find them very easily through this tool. All right, scenario number two. My agency is contemplating a change in regulation, like opening a fishery earlier or shifting stock lines. I'm interested in knowing where the animals are, how the distribution changes in time. In this case, I'm going to use Cobia. So I'm going to make myself a couple of layers here. And I'm interested in cobia distribution in the earlier months from say January to April. So again, I pick my species. I'm gonna use all years, but I make this one for January. And I can very quickly move through these layers and change them. As you can see, I left one as range and I'm gonna go back and change that in just a minute. Here we go. Cause it's telling me right here that I'm showing the range. So I'm just gonna change that back to distribution. And I can go through and I can change these colors. I can change uh, again, who, which level is on top. I can move them up, I can move them down. I can make them very clear. Um, I, can, I can make them more, more solid. Now, what we could tell from these is that cobia are not in the northern extent of their range in the very beginning of the year. 
So just from this information, if I was having an assessment, I can see that this is really important information and these researchers would be really important to contact because the fishery for cobia starts on January 1. So if we have an early closer of a fishery, which has happened in the recent past, the anglers in North Carolina and Virginia are gonna be disproportionately affected by that closure. So I'm getting information here. And when I scroll over, I can actually, it'll tell me information on each of those layers so I can see when uh, COBE are present. And then I can, again, very easily can go over to citations and get contact information for the public. So let's contemplate a third and last scenario. My organization is planning a water-based project like dredging an inlet or installing wind turbines. I need to know what certain species are present in my area of interest. We are specifically interested in the area off of Georgia in August. The species I know that use the area include Atlantic triple tail, Atlantic sturgeon, and red drop. So I'm going to move, I wanna zoom in a little bit to my area of interest. I'm gonna select my species and my construction time frame is in August. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for. So we have Atlantic sturgeon in August. Atlantic triple tail in August and red drum in August. There we are. I can zoom in, in and then if I wanna zoom in and I wanna make these pictures a little smaller, I like looking at the pictures, but say I just wanna see a little bit more of the screen, I can make them smaller, I can zoom on in. So when I scroll over, I can see the areas where all species are present and areas where some of the species are present. So this can help inform me in specific areas where you're having overlap of the time and space of habitat use by these species. And again, we have contact information um, so that you could get more information about these projects. So that concludes our demo walkthrough. We can pause for a moment in case anyone has questions or would like to see something else demoed. Joy, there's a question in the chat from Bill. What do the dots indicate? Hey, uh, the, um, sorry, just to clarify if he can, uh, like when I'm hovering over with the, with the shapes. Yeah, I'm just, there. do those dots reflect the, the, the location of that species at the time that you have selected here or what? I mean, <clears throat> yes, yeah, I sorry. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not asking the question correctly, but I see a dot there and I'm just trying to figure out that dot is telling me what. Yeah, so you can think of this almost like a heat distribution map where on the color scheme, um, so the darkers uh, are, so the number of animal changes by the lightness of the color. And so even, so like this dot um, mm. represents, there's one animal here. And then in this layer, when it changes color, see as it shifts over, see from this purple to the white, the number next to it changes, that's the number of animals that were calculated in that area um, for density for that time period that you've selected? For the time period I've selected. And you can actually see uh, where okay. I've stopped. It says August there. So I could have, I could change this and I could make it each different month and it would show me a layer for each different month and then it'll, it'll um, give me that moving <laughs> scale for each month. Okay, so there, there's snapshots. There are snapshots of a particular time that you have selected. Yes, these are, and I, and I can change that time period. I can change my year if I wanted to be specific about what year. Um, I wanted to look at as well. Okay, all right, all right, thanks. No problem. Do we have any other questions or that we would like to? Okay, that's great. I think that that sound is just the, the sound of love for the tool is what I'm gonna take that as. So now that we've concluded our walkthrough, um, we can talk a little bit more about how you can engage and support the tool. So there are currently things in the tool that we want to keep improving. The grant that funded this tool is coming to an end, but we will be seeking funding to improve the accuracy of the visualizations and improve the data's usability. 
To increase the accuracy, we would like to systematically apply species level QAQC rules to the raw data before the calculations or before the locations are calculated. Currently, the data are quality controlled on an equipment level, but traditionally it is up to the researcher to filter out any untrue detections. And untrue detections do exist and they mess with some of the visualizations. Secondly, rework the underlying algorithm for rivers and estuaries. The buffer system works well offshore, but falls apart inshore. To improve the usability, we would like to add school curriculum so teachers can pick up and use the tool in lessons. We'd like to refine the interface, revamp the project pages that the citations link to, and of course, increase the amount of contributed data. We did a soft launch in March and so far have over a quarter of the projects fully approved and good to go. We have only received two opt outs, so we expect this tool to grow. And finally, we'd like to add the ability to download and transfer information. Our question for you while watching the demo, did anything stand out as something that could be improved to make this tool better for you? Anything that we can add to this wish list? You can feel free to unmute yourself and speak, or you can write in the chat. And we'll pause for a minute in case anyone has something they would like to add. Bill, do you want to vocalize that? There you go. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, John. Um, when you say increase accuracy of the visuals, what are you? You, you mentioned uh, type of species as if maybe there's a an inaccurate level of species that you're using, or what 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 are the indices that you're looking for to in, to make more accurate, I guess, is what I'm trying to figure out. Is it the location of them or are they? Um, yes. What is it? Yeah. So this, this, this is great. I'm actually, I'm really glad you asked this question because we talk about um, this a lot. And there is a program out called Remora that's come out of Australia and John can jump in and correct me um, if I say anything incorrect about it. And they've actually already adopted some of these rules. So, so essentially with acoustic telemetry, you can have false detections, um, particularly in arrays where there was a high density of tags. And when those tags ping and they're all pinging against each other, sometimes they make just random tag that to random tags that are registered on a receiver, but they can collide into each other in such a way that it can actually register a tag that that is true, but it's not a real animal. And we see that frequently in our data sets. So typically what we do on a species level as a researcher would do, we would apply something like a velocity filter. So that would say that if there is you know, too much of a distance between these detections, that is most likely not a true detection and the animal was not there. Um, there's also some fatality filters that you can, that you can use as well. Um, and that's something that we would like to apply systematically. Like for instance, uh, in something that I study with Cobia, we have false detections in Canada, multiple false detections in Canada. Um, and so the range looks like it goes to Canada, uh, it does not. Um, so one of the other levels that we can apply is actually a uh, species distribution as well. And what we'll end up with is a sort of uncertainty for all of, or we'll have the ability to have an, a certainty level for all those detections, much like to our satellite telemetry data, where you, you get an, a, a sort of metric that tells you, you know, how, how accurate it may be. We're, we would like to apply that and do that with acoustic telemetry data. So again, we can refine and kick out those false detections that typically it's always on the onus of the researcher to do. Yep, and uh, I will jump in to add that OTN is going to be extending Remora, which currently only works in continental Australia, uh, to be globally applicable. Uh, there's other programs like GLaDOS that are currently doing some of the filtering, but not all the across all the dimensions that Joy just mentioned. So hopefully there will be a tool like this that can that can allow us to uh, run this quality control across all these dimensions. There is some species consideration to be uh, baked into a velocity filter. So there's there's going to be some consideration have to be made and perhaps some researcher input to what the appropriate settings for those quality control checks will be. And those will actually be part of the tool. Is that the uh, intention? The intention or the ideal is that would be applied. So right now, the there is no extra effort on behalf of the researcher for their data to be, or for their information to be summarized in this tool, because uh, we're able to pull it directly from research workspace. And the idea would be basically as we pull from research workspace, we would apply those filters to it, and then the information would be displayed in the DAVIT tool. So we're making what's being displayed more accurate. 
but I'm, and I think John would concur is, is because these tools are being, you know, they're going to be expanded um, beyond Australia is that it's not going to be, it wouldn't be just for this. Like we would basically take it, be able to incorporate it into the Davit to make things more accurate, but also researchers could use it individually on, the, on their own research or even would apply to something like the ATN DAC. If you were getting the raw data, you might be able to, um, you know, uh, use, use those filters to, to uh, quality control. Yep. That's our exact intention is that a, a tool that will be generally useful for any individual researchers all the way up to Fizz tools like this all the way through aggregating networks like ours. All right, that's cool. Yeah, great. Thank you, John. Enjoy. Um, so I realized that we just kind of threw this tool at you. You had some very brief, uh, you had a, a brief interaction with it, but if you have um, any other feedback, we would love to get your impact, input. You can use the feedback button um, on the Tabit tool, or you can email data at thefactnetwork.org. And finally, if you see any opportunities for resources to fulfill this list, please let us know. Above all, we would like this tool to be used. Leading through example, we hope the success of the tool will instigate other networks to do the same. If you know of a person or persons you think would be interested, please click the link in the chat and just take a moment and you can uh, just put name and contact information and we will do the follow-up and send them information on the tool. Please help us share this tool. If you are tweeting away, Phil, I know you're a big tweeter, about what an awesome webinar you sat through, please comment and tag us. Not quite a swag bag, but you will receive a follow-up email with a flyer and link to the recording of the webinar. Please share as appropriate. Or we'll reply to the email with a list of names and we can do the follow-up. Thank you very much for coming today and a huge thank you to Sakura and the Animal, Telemi Animal Telemetry Network for supporting this tool. Happy to stick around if you have any questions, but we wanna honor your time commitment and we are almost up to the 30 minute mark. But before you leave, we ask you please just take a few seconds. Again, if you can think of anyone that you, would, that you think would like to hear about this tool, drop their contact information in the chat or through the link in the chat and we will follow up with them. Thank you very much. And we are looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Joy. That that was really good. I've seen it several times. It gets better each time, so that's that's good news. Um, just a quick question: Sakura has, um, you know, a, a a set of stakeholders that they are regularly interacting with. I assume this has gone out to them, or they have advertised it to that group, or a relevant part of that group. This kind of marks the start of when we were really reaching out to stakeholders. So Sakura um, has seen it through the walkthrough and we were waiting until this, this data push that just got complete is when we got the new influx of data. Um, so Sakura knew when it went live, but we asked them actually not to advertise it at that time. So now as we've done the stakeholder meetings, we've gotten some feedback and this is when we're gonna say, okay, take, take, take it out and tell, tell the world. Yeah, that's what we need to hear from the people that, that have actually been wanting to see this data. And, and now we're providing information, not the data, which is even better. And uh, hopefully this is the kind of thing that they've been, been looking for. So uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah, we uh, we in, invited a gamut of people to these webinars. Um, some people opted, they just wanted the uh, recorded webinar afterwards. Um, so I think everyone, and then we, uh, and, and all on that list was also the other regional IUSs as well. So I think we're just going to send the links out to everyone, um, with the flyer and the, the recording of the webinar. Okay, great. That's super. Thank you. Thank you, Bill.